um, the reason that our family got into um, digesters is because of our neighbors. Uh, so we were we had some odor um, related complaints. And, um, so we started doing research uh, on how to reduce um, some of the odors in our manure and uh, a digester came up as one of the best options to be able to do that. When we built the digester, um, we, we didn't know there would be any other benefits other than odor reduction. And so we did a lot of touring of digesters and we were, were really sold on, on how it did reduce the odor. But when, after we built it, um, um, you know, we, were, we, we timed it right, I guess, if you will, that uh, Pennsylvania was then required to buy our electricity that it was producing. So then all of a sudden we had a market to sell electricity into rather, rather than you know, just a couple months before there was no market to sell electricity. So there was an additional revenue stream to be able to collect from the electricity. And then a couple months later, uh, we got a call from a food waste client seeing if we could take food waste and uh, that generated additional revenue as well. We didn't know that was there. Uh, and then also we're seeing in our fields now just the kind of the, the nutrient availability of, of our manure it has changed since we put a digester in and um, because we take additional food waste as well, we have a higher nitrogen value as well, so our manure is worth more to us as a fertilizer. Are there other non-financial benefits you also appreciate? So I think, so two that I can think of right off the bat is, is why we originally built it was the odor reduction. It does, it does, the manure still stinks when it comes out of the digester, but not, not for a week like it used to now it's a day or two. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's the neighbor relations or the community relations um, aspect that's, that's worth something to us. And then the other thing that we enjoy or that I enjoy is, is the story that we get to tell about dairy sustainability that a digester and recycling food waste um, does for, for our farm and for dairy in general in the industry. So um, I just, it just gives us a platform to, to talk about dairy and to talk about sustainability. And um, I, think there's, I think that's a, a tangible benefit to us and to the industry. Does the digester system add net profit to your business? So does the digester add net profit to our business? So in our case, it does. Um, and we've, um, we've kind of developed a business around a digester to, to ensure that it does. So um, the second part of your question was, um, could, we, could we do it just on electricity? And the answer is uh, yes, maybe. Um, so it also it depends on how much uh, grant funding and um, subsidies you get to actually purchase the digester up front because digesters are very expensive. So if you get 75, 50 to 75 percent of your digester paid for, um, it is possible to make it work on the electricity um, prices that we're getting paid now. And that's just for Pennsylvania. So other states get paid a lot less. So Pennsylvania has a much more advantageous electric price to make it work. Um, and then of course, if you can get into some other value added stuff like food waste, um, and then on our digester, we use all the heat off of it. So we don't really use any fossil fuels for heating or hot water or shop or house. Um, so that's a savings for us. And then um, we also generate bedding from the solids once it comes out of the digester, which is a, a significant savings for us as well. So there is, things that you can do on the back end of a digester as well as the front end to make them a little bit more profitable, but it does take time and effort to be able to do that. What are you getting per kilowatt hour? Per yeah, so we're getting paid six cents a kilowatt um, from PPNL. Um, that number used to be 11 cents. Um, so it's come down quite a bit since when we started. Yeah. Um, so it's always something that we're concerned about. It's been hanging out about six cents for the last probably four or five years. So do I think it's gonna go lower than that? Probably not, but Will it go higher? I don't know. <laughs> sure. So approximate ROI. Um, so our first one was about a four year payback. Um, and that digester was, was cheaper. Um, that's including getting grants and this stuff and electricity. And electricity was worth a lot more back then. Um, the second one, we're probably looking at six to seven year return, um, which it's still worth it to us, um, even though at year 10 you start thinking about putting another motor in, um, uncovering the digester to clean it out, which is all very expensive stuff to do. So, um, so we look at a six to seven year return on the, on the new one, um, just, and they're so expensive to build now as well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's part of the reason why we don't get as good as an ROI on a, sure. 
on the newest stuff that we're building. So we are diverting 15, last year was 15,000 tons of food waste is what we diverted um, away from a landfill into our facility here. Are there any policy things that the government could do to make, your, make it work better for you? Yeah, so the renewable fuel standards, um, I'm not sure if you know much about that, but um, there is potential for that to in at least double what we get paid for electricity. Um, which would be a huge benefit, um, maybe triple. People are throwing all kinds of crazy numbers out right now. It's just, um, um, it's something within the EPA that hasn't been enacted yet. It's been passed or signed, but it has been going on for, for 15 years, I think, since since Bush, Obama. Um, Bush and Obama, those presidencies. And so uh, EPA is, is kind of dragging their feet for one reason or another. I mean, there's a lot of permits uh, from DEP here that you have to get to put a digester in and some of them don't make sense to me like the air quality you know if we're if I'm building a manure pit I don't need to have an air quality permit but if I'm building a digester I do and I'm capturing the methane and that was the permit that took the longest to get and so you know streamlining you know some of the things at DEP that you know especially when you're building like some of these sustainable you know farming type practices you know I think there should be put front and center and and <laughs> yeah, go build them, please. Um, and so I don't know why there was, you know, I think I had four or five permits just to build a digester. And so. Okay. Um, about how much labor is required to run your digester operation? The food waste inside of our business has seven people working for it now. Um, it's 24 seven operation and um, it continues to grow. And so we're, we're really focusing on that business. When everything is working smoothly, um, it's really probably half an hour a day of just checking to make sure temperatures are right and, and, and gas levels are, are okay. Um, of course, when things fall apart, which it does happen, um, they are a mechanical machine and a biological. So you have two two ways for it to break. And uh, when one of those things falls apart, it does it can take days um, to get things right. What sort of skills um, beyond like what you would have for a regular dairy farm? Yeah, so you know, I think a digester um, in incorporates well into a dairy farm. Most most dairy farmers have have the mechanical and analytical skills as well. And so you know, most farmers are used to working with manure. And so if you're used to working with manure, you can probably work with the digester. To run a digester, you, it's like a it's like a cow's stomach, we say. And so you know, depending on what it's getting fed, is is how it reacts. And so you just got to pay attention to a lot of different things. Um, and of course there's the mechanical skills as well and just keeping pumps and mixers running. Um, that's, that's kind of a big part of keeping it working <laughs> for the most part. So we like to keep our digester temperature at 100 degrees even. So what we do with the heat in the summertime is, is just basically release it so it comes off the motor and we don't, we don't capture it in our, in our water um, capturing system. Although we do use the heat still to heat the digester. Uh, we don't have to use as much heat and we still use the heat to heat the hot water we need to wash wash our milking parlor and whatnot. It's always, we're always learning um, on these things. So we've been operating our original one for 13 years now. We are doing studies right now with, with Penn State and um, they, are, um, they are checking out our, our manure very in detail and they're noticing that we have um, a lot more uh, nitrogen in our manure. Um, they, say it's because of our digester and they also say it's because of some of the food waste um, things that we're getting and so um, we are we're putting that on the ground we're doing studies we have done a, a couple different studies and it's it's show it's proving true that a digested manure is is more valuable to, um, than, than conventional manure according to their studies you know our, our original digester blew up um, so it, it caught on fire um, that was just some design things that probably should have been different um, to begin with um, so that was a big surprise um, it also our original one also filled up with solids as well um, just not mixing appropriately and, and enough um, and then when something breaks uh, you know until you call a service person out um, you're looking at a couple thousand dollars uh, typically um, and so <laughs> I think last month I spent uh, I think I spent $10,000 on both of my motors, but there were pretty significant problems that happened in the same month. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen again this month because um, then they're not profitable. So, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there is, there is some pretty big bills that you can, or bills that you can get to, to, that keeps them going. But 
you just kind of have to prepare for them in advance. We, we try to be cheaper than a landfill um, and um, you know, there's, there's definitely significant labor costs involved in taking um, food waste as well as infrastructure. Um, and so um, it is, um, it's a close, it's a tight margin. Uh, so it is all, it all is based on basically volume um, to make it somewhat profitable. Yeah, so do your research um, and, and pick the right digester company to work with for sure. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that say they can build digesters. Um, there's also a lot of failed digesters and uh, there's quite a few here in the state that, that didn't work out. Um, so it's, you know, work with a reputable digester company that, that can support the system after it's built. Um, I think that's key. Um, and then um, I think location on your farm is important. So are you looking to capture the heat and how do you want to use that heat? I mean, you have to build the motor close enough to your facilities um, to be able to capture that heat as well. Awesome. Uh, any other thing you want to say to the camera? Like about? I got, everyone always asks me that question. I have no like, <laughs> I have no like, punchline at the end. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, great. yeah, that's it. That's great. all I got. That was great.